Hi, I'm Gail Sokol, and on today's episode, we're going to have another of Inside Chat. Welcome to Baking Radio. Learn the art and science of baking with author, educator, and award-winning chef, Gail Sokol. Whether you've been baking your whole life, or you're brand new to the world of baking and you're looking to build your confidence and learn new skills in the kitchen, you're in the right place. This is Baking Radio. On this episode, we'll have another Ovenside chat with Holly Harz about specialty baking. Now, Holly Harz has her own business in the Adirondacks called Adirondack Delectables, and it's up in Malone, New York, and she's amazing. Holly, welcome to Baking Radio, and it's so wonderful to have you again. Thank you, Gail. This is such fun for me to be able to do this. Thank you for having me. Well, you are not like I'm having an episode on Baking Radio. You're just like chatting with a friend. It's like so easy to talk to you. You're just awesome. Thank you. And I love what you do with your specialty baking. You do an incredible amount with gluten-free baking, paleo baking, keto baking, And I want to talk to you about this because I don't think a lot of bake shops do this. So let's start with gluten-free baking. What types of stuff do you do? What type of flours do you use? Um, You know, and maybe go into what gluten-free is in case there's a listener that might not know what that is. Okay, gluten is found just in wheat. So you can't use any kind of wheat or wheat products of which there are a lot. Wheat is in everything. Um, If you, you know, you you have to look and make sure that there isn't any kind of wheat listed on the label, and many labels will now tell you attention allergen wheat. I use a blend that actually Pillsbury puts out that is a baking flour. Mm. Um, The very first wedding cake that I did that was gluten-free, um, we did with chickpea flour because that's what they had at the time. And yes. the people loved it, and I did not. Yeah. I was not yeah. impressed with the chickpea flour. We It was so important. The, the person had uh, celiac disease, so it was extremely important that they not have any trace of anything. So we even had to get special vanilla because sometimes there is wheat in vanilla. It's amazing how much gluten they put in everything from anything from soy sauce to uh, thick, you know, uh, uh, gravies, um, anything you can think of, even drinks and beverages. And, you you know, they use it uh, as a as a thickening agent. So you have to be super, super careful. You're correct. And you're so smart because there's so many people that might hire a baker to make a cake or a specialty baked item and they get sick and they can't trust it. Exactly. So, so you're exactly. very smart. And there's even barley, rye, and certain oats that are not to be eaten if you're gluten-free. So it's, I mean, oats sometimes can get contaminated, especially when they're being grown. The wheat particles can blow down, you know, the farm. Yes. So right. uh, it's very important. You're a very, very smart baker to do this. So um, what is your, what is the the flour combination. I'm sure it's a combination that you use. Um, it is. And I I don't have a bag in front of me right now, but I do know that there is chickpea in it. There is... Um, rice? Boy, there's a rice flour in it. It's a, it's a combination of flours that ends up being much more like wheat flour. Yep. And I think there's lupin and the chickpea and, like you said, the rice. And there's a few different ones in there. And this I have tried, and it does taste good. Good. This is one that you would not, unless somebody told you, you would not know that you weren't eating wheat flour. You know, I I have tried some gluten-free flour uh, myself in in a a lot of different um, baked goods, and they look gorgeous but they don't have the flavor. And it might be the chickpea flour. I don't know. You mentioned something called lupin, you said? Lupin flour. Yep. What is what is that? I've never actually heard of that. Lupin is a plant. Actually, I use it for the keto baking also. Okay. Um, 
keto can have no grains whatsoever. So there's no oats. There's no, so I use a lot of almond flour or coconut flour. So do you use almond flour and coconut flour in your GF baking, your gluten-free baking as well? Depending on what it is. Yes. Um, you know, it depends on what it is. I get a lot of people that, that, for instance, a vegan, um, mm-hmm. it, it, it's not an allergy. They're not allergic. They just don't want any animal, animal products, products right. whatsoever. Yeah. And, and that's a very difficult one also because even margarine has whey in it and whey comes from milk. Yes. You yeah. Know? Isn't it crazy? So you have to be yeah. very careful. Yeah. You can't use honey because it came from a bee. Isn't that something from it, right. from an animal or an insect right. or yeah yeah no there's and, there's a lot of reasons people uh, want to be vegans um, or certain vegetarians so you you really have to find out from your customers do you ask them what you can and cannot eat or do they volunteer this well if somebody says they want a vegan cake I, I you know, know that, that yeah you know I can't use honey I can't use any kind of milk product. You know, anything, no eggs, nothing like that. Um, Did you ever? It makes it very difficult. It makes it very difficult. Did you ever have a person that didn't tell you exactly what they couldn't eat and you made a cake and it was, well, caused a little problem or not, or you were, you were, you're so thorough you ask beforehand? Well, no, I don't, unless they volunteer, there's no way I'm going to know. Of so course. If they don't tell me. Right. Now, one, one very difficult one again is a peanut allergy. Mm-hmm. And um, like I cannot even bake in the same oven with anything that's got any kind of peanut because it literally could kill someone. Right. So what so do you do? What do you do? I they- clean the oven. I bleach everything. I bleach all my equipment, and then I bake. And then the you bake with it. Peanut. But you have to be so careful because, again, peanut is in so many things. Yes. They use, okay, again, for instance, keto. I personally am, I have followed a ketogenic diet for five years, and it's amazing what sugar is in, which is everything. Yeah, I mean, it is. Ev- every single, it's very, very, very difficult um, to find any kind of food without sugar in it. It's just because they put it into everything. Well, let's let's talk about the keto diet um, now and, and just really delve into it. So it's it's high. It's a diet that's high in fat and low in carbs, right? So carb sugar is a carb. Very high fat, yep. very low, very low um, carb, and moderate protein. So it's very. It's sort of similar to the Atkins diet was, right? It's if you if somebody followed Atkins, it would be close to the induction phase of Atkins. Okay, not that, the regular Atkins, but the induction phase. I remember meeting a, a a chef when I was working uh, and teaching in a culinary school, and he came in. He we were making pizzas, and he asked for a Atkins or like a keto pizza. He just wanted the toppings on a plate. Right. Which was you the cheese and the sausage. Cheese and the sauce and yeah. the meat. Um, you can do that, but I, I make a pizza crust that is quite good. It is not ever going to be a wheat crust, but it's it's really good. And I make it out of mozzarella cheese and almond flour or coconut. I can't remember. I guess it's coconut flour. Mozzarella, coconut flour, an egg, and uh, baking powder. That's, and that's wild. And it's actually you melt the you melt the cheese and then mix all the rest in and it makes a dough. I make Danish out of this same kind of oh, dough. Oh wow! I just put some sweetener in and I eat very well. I eat sweet things. I make cookies. I make cakes. Um, you know how do you I, how do you make a cake in the keto diet? How would you make a cake? I would use again almond or coconut flour, okay. um, depending on what kind of cake it is and what texture you want on it. Cocoa is fine on keto. I I can make a chocolate cake, um, eggs, and you know just pretty much. I use something called erythritol for a sweetener. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, brand name that you can find in Walmart is Swerve. It tastes just like sugar. Yeah, um, you can you find can, it in the grocery store too. It's awesome. Oh yeah, the Walmart carries it. Yeah, um, it's it's quite good. If I want to make chocolate chip cookies, I use. Um, the Walmart brand is called Bake Believe. 
chocolate chips. They are sugar-free, made with erythritol. Very and cool. And they're actually really good. And, you know, I have brownies that I make that are better than normal brownies. That's in my wild. So and you make that with coconut flour as well or almond flour? The brownies, um, yeah, there's coconut flour in them. And they're, they're actually really, really good. Um, that- that, sound, that sounds absolutely delicious because I saw a picture. You sent me a picture. You make bagels, too. Oh, the bagels. Yeah, and those are made with the mozzarella dough. They call I it magic mozzarella. was awed by that. I couldn't believe. You showed me a picture, and I said, no, that's just a picture of bagels. But they are not the, your typical bagel. And how do they taste? They're really good. Yeah? They're chewy like a bagel. The flavor, think about it. I mean, mozzarella cheese doesn't have a lot of flavor in it. Right, it's pretty I bland. But everything bagel seasoning on them, and you really wouldn't know. Now, do you boil them first, too? I do not boil them. Oh, I so shape you- them, put them on a cookie sheet, and I bake them, and that's it. And then I toast them just like you'd toast a bagel. I split them in half and toast them. And I they don't them. melt? That, like, will the mozzarella no. get gooey? No, 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 because you've mixed it in really With the good. flowers, and with, your, with yeah. your coconut almond. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And what I do is um, I use, most people don't do this, but I discovered this trick one day. The problem with the dough is once the mozzarella starts to cool, it's very hard to work with. Yes. It's thick, you know? Yes. If you throw everything in a food processor... And let the food processor mix it. It takes literally seconds. It's mixed well, whereas if you're using a spoon, it takes forever. Yes. And so your dough is still warm and you shape it. And then you can wait. You don't even have to bake it right then. It's just the shaping that you want to do while it's still warm. Now, can you make those ahead and then bake them, you know, once you shape them and then bake them? that's what I do. The next day. Now, I know... Um, put them you, in the fridge. Yeah, put them in the fridge. And f- fresh, you'd probably use fresh mozzarella, not the shredded that you would buy, right? I shred my own, but some people use the shredded. The problem with shredded cheese of any kind is that they put potato starch or cornstarch in it to keep it from sticking together. Yeah, and it doesn't melt as well. The fresh mozzarella, I would assume, for the bagel would be better. Yes, and okay. both of those, cornstarch and potato starch, are not keto they're not on the keto diet. oh they're so. not on the keto diet no potatoes no starch you know no huh. they're carbs okay they're so carbs. that so, so that's um you know th- so that's a tough thing to to balance you you really know your keto stuff no oh, i've been doing it for long enough and yeah. i did a whole ton of research on it so let's know. let's talk about sugar-free baking which we did bring up Erythritol is one of my favorites. I actually do a podcast episode on erythritol because mm-hmm. it's one of my, and that's a sugar alcohol. So do you use any other? Yes, uh, absolutely. I use something called Boca Sweet, which is made from the Comboca plant. Okay. Um, and I use something called Allulose, which is very close to the Boca Sweet, but a little bit less expensive. And what I use them for my Thanksgiving table had cranberry sauce made with them, pumpkin pie made with them. Mm. Um, ice cream is my main thing that I make with them. And trust me, this is this ice cream is better than Ben and Jerry's, if I may say that. Oh, it sounds good. Um, it's all heavy cream, so it's very, very rich. <laughs> what heavy could cream. be bad? <laughs> right, exactly. I have a question and, for you. I'm going to interject for what I don't mean to interrupt you, but one second. When you mentioned like the pumpkin pie filling, uh, ice cream, so that particular sweetener that you just brought up, is it just good for sweetening or can you also cream it with butter? Oh, no, you can cream it with butter. But the reason the reason I use it in those specific things is because erythritol will crystallize. Okay. So if you make your cranberry sauce, the day you make it, it's nice, it's sauce, it's, it's like it should be. But then it starts to set up and the crystals will form. So it's a little bit grainy. It, it still tastes good. It's just the texture gets grainy. I see, I see. Whereas okay. neither Boca Sweet nor Allulose will do that. They stay soft. So if you're making a, say, a cookie that you want to be crispy, you will, don't want to use the Boca Sweet or the Allulose because they will stay soft. Okay, yeah. Okay, so you have to kind of figure out. And, and again, the erythritol in ice cream, will make it so hard as a rock that you can't get a spoon into it. Oh, wow. I've but never the tried erythritol. The Boca Sweet keep oh, it soft. Now, okay. something else that a lot of people use 
is xylitol, and I won't use it because I have my dog, and it is poisonous. Deadly to yes. Dogs. Then the other thing I've used is maltitol. I don't know if you've ever tried can't that. Have that on keto. Okay, you can't have that on keto. No, it, it raises. Now I am not on keto. I'm not diabetic. I don't have blood sugar problems. But malitol will raise your blood sugar more than table sugar does. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, I know erythritol can also, just a little bit, I had a, a diabetic friend that I made a dessert with, with erythritol, and he said he had a little trouble with really? some, of the, some of the sugar alcohols, not all of them, but erythritol, just a little bit, it raised it up a little. Okay. I've never heard of it doing it with that, but that's... But you know, maltitol I mean, is a sugar alcohol as well, and they may yes. vary a little bit, so... Um, Malitol and maltodextrin do not, I would not use them myself. Right, right. But it's what they use in every, Russell Stover, Sugar Free Candy uses it, all the Atkins stuff uses it. Now, let me ask but, you about another um, sweetener that I'm going to, we're like a, like a sucralose, which I have not had good luck with unless I just want to sweeten something. And that's like a Splenda brand. Um, right. And that is, uh, there is one atom in the sugar in the sucrose molecule that is changed uh, for another atom. And that's what makes it sucralose. It's just not absorbed as well. So it just doesn't cream well. It looks, right. I made brownies with it and it, they look like the, they look like the, the surface of Mars and they taste it oh, even really? worse. Yeah. Very bad. Okay. The other thing I use is stevia. Yeah, but okay. you have to be very careful. I bought a bag in Walmart, green, huge letters, stevia on it, got it home, and I hadn't read the label, which I learned very quickly to read every label. It is a little bit of stevia and a really lot of malitol. Wow. So I can't, crazy. I had to throw it out. Okay, you know. that, isn't that crazy? Now, do you also have problems, I'm going to mention it, with erythritol, it's a sensitive subject, that if you overeat it, it can have some gastrointestinal problems. I have never had a problem with okay. it. Okay, because if you overindulge your portion size, you can have some um, some problems. And I, you I, will I definitely have that with malitol. Yes, yeah, any, any sugar alcohol can have Guaranteed. a problem. Yeah, In yeah. fact, if you... If you want to have a good laugh someday, go on Amazon and read the comments on the sugar-free gummy bears. <laughs> you will laugh and yeah. laugh yeah. and laugh. Yeah. They're funny. A um, natural laxative. Yes. 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 <laughs> very, very much so. But the, uh, the comments are hilarious. <laughs> I'm sure they are, and probably a few that we cannot re uh, say on on, no, uh, not on at radio. All, but <laughs> <laughs> so I have. I, let's go into another baking that you know very well. Paleo, right? Okay. I don't know paleo well. Oh, you don't? I, I thought no, you did. No, I don't. I, when I have people that come to me and want something paleo, I have to go look up. And then I do check with them because I am not really familiar with. I know they can have maple syrup. They can... You know, the, it's it's a lot like keto, but not, if that yes. makes any kind of sense. It's supposed to be a diet that sort of mirrors what humans ate during the Paleolithic age. Right. I didn't even know there was humans in the Paleolithic age. I didn't age. either. Who knew? So you can't have cheese, um, but you can eat meat, fish, eggs, nuts and seeds, and fruits and vegetables, and any type of uh, oils uh, or, you know, or healthy fats. So I don't know where that leaves us as uh, bakers. Right. Um, but I don't know. So you never really made a paleo cake or anything like that. I did not. I have not had anybody ask me to do that. Like I said, the reason I chose keto over paleo is because probably 50% of my diet is cheese. I love cheese. Yeah, yeah, and that's a hard thing. You can not have, to have cheese on keto because it's very low in carbs. Right, um, right. I think an ounce is one carb and I get 20 carbs a day. And who's going to eat 20 ounces of cheese in a day? You right. Know? Probably a um, lot of people would try. <laughs> yeah, probably. But yeah. I mean, when you've got the, the meat and the bacon and everything else. You yeah, and that they fill you up too. So yes, it's fat all fills you up. Fat fills you, fat up. Fills you up. But so. um, this has been so informative, Holly, because I bet there's a lot of people listening that knew nothing about paleo, keto, sugar-free, what, what different sweeteners you can use. You're just a plethora of knowledge. Um, and you're just, you know, a lot of bakers, I don't think would know as much as you um, and care 
about their customers as much to make sure they get it right so nobody has an issue health-wise. So I actually had a man come last week an hour to pick up a cake because his mom is gluten-free and she has had exactly what you said. She's gotten something that claimed to be gluten-free and, and then had trouble with it. So he comes because yeah. he knows she doesn't get sick with my... I'm very, I'm very sensitive to people's um, needs on that because I don't want anybody to ever get sick on anything that I give them. That's yeah. why you're an incredible, an incredible baker and a great human being to do that. And that man must love his mama. Oh, to, to drive yeah. all that way to get, you know, to get some baked goods from you. So um, very, very lucky mom to have a son like that. But yes, I want to thank you so much. Um, my guest today was Holly Harz. Uh, she has a wonderful bake shop called Adirondack Delectables uh, in the Adirondacks. The website is adirondackdelectables.com. It is in Malone, New York. Now tell me your Facebook page again. Um, it's Adirondack Delectables. Okay. All right. And uh, I want to thank you. This has been super informative. Uh, it has for me too. So um, I know a lot of people have learned a lot. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Gail, for having me. On the next episode, we'll have another of Inside Chat. Thanks so much for listening. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, my YouTube channel, and my website, chefgailsokol.com.